ladies and gentlemen and all the core gamers out there caj man triple seven here welcoming you back to metroid prime 3 today in the last episode we took down the metroid hatcher and made our way further through the pirate homeworld facility eventually landing landing ourselves in the mining site of the space pirate homeworld which is where we are going to be picking up our last beam upgrade <sighs> unfortunately I've had to record this episode at least once already. And I'll get more to that in a second. We already technically knew where these were. But as you know, we couldn't access it because there's a green door in the way. Which, by the way, is the last beam we're going to be picking up in this episode. Um, But yeah. I've had to record this episode once already. Because stupid me forgot to turn on my microphone for the first episode. For the first time I recorded this. Luckily, what I do... After I finish an episode, you guys may wonder, why the heck do I always stop by my ship rather than going in and saving? Well, the reason I do that is because if a video corrupts where I have to possibly re-record it, or if something happens like my mic isn't on, I don't actually save my progress and I can go back to where I was. So, as I was saying, we are going to be doing uh, some more exploring of the Space Pirate homeworld today. Uh, going to be picking ourselves up a last beam. We're also going to be heading to Norian to finish up all the item collection there. Uh, in this episode, you guys can expect us to pick up both of the last remaining energy cells that we need, not counting the one that you get for free on the GFS Valhalla. You can expect us to get to, I believe, about 210 missiles, uh, maybe 215 missiles. And uh, I want to get right into it with you guys because I've already had to do it once. So I've already had practice with this, and my commentary should very well much be on point and uh, very informative for you guys. But, of course, as I want to get into this episode i have to take this opportunity to thank our donators over there on patreon first valentine blaze mickey four gens maddie lee thomas and color craze for their continued support to the channel so as i've said i've already gone through this entire area first uh once with no audio so the first room we're actually going to walk into is the main room of the space pirate mining facility where we're going to be attacked by a couple stealth troopers and an armored space pirate trooper First thing you want to do, instantly obliterate the normal pirate trooper and shoot the security uh, clamp. If you don't shoot the security clamp, uh, you are going to be getting more pirates than you bargained for, including two stealth pirates, which, by the way, you can absolutely obliterate once you break uh, the once you break the armor on both of them. Uh, one hyper missile takes them both out. Uh, so, uh, provided they're not, of course, in hyper mode because the stealth troopers have way more health than they need to freeze die all right well that that's the first room cleared pretty easily so the next thing we're gonna do you may notice that we actually can't access anything in particular here you may notice there's also a missile expansion there we're gonna be getting that first and you may notice there's a platform up there that we can't quite reach so our instinct is essentially telling us let's go back around this platform and let's activate whatever the space pirates have so this is a mining drill that we are going to bring down here. Uh, and much like every single Metroid Prime game, of course, every time we go into a space pirate area, there's a drill. Metroid Prime 1, it was in the phase on mines. Metroid Prime 2, it was in the pirate homeworld ver version of the Dark World. Well, kind of. And then, of course, in Metroid Prime 3, there's literally this giant drill in the space pirate homeworld on this mining in this mining facility. So, I always like to break the right side first uh because all it's going to do is power up this drill and it's just going to drill the wall for us and it's actually going to open up the missile expansion we are going to get a little bit of a load uh because it does have to load the change now this one i will let play all the way through as you can see it turns around and there's another drill there's more than one drill there is double the drill i would make a horrible anime reference here but i don't think i am qualified enough to do that at this point So we're going to let the drill finish its thing, and we should be good now to skip. Excellent. If you skip it at the right time, you don't have to wait that extra second to load, so that's pretty easy. Um, now, 
uh, before we go even further into the mining facility, I just want to note that this area is actually the smallest area of this base pirate homeworld, so expect us to fly through it actually really quickly. Um, so all we're going to do for this next section, we're just going to boost ball up. Twice, hopefully, and we're in. Nice and easy, nice and easy. Now, over there, in that wall, by that system, there's an energy cell, which we will be picking up after we get the Nova Beam. And here is an elevator platform that actually is not going to work. Uh, there's also a couple crawl tanks, but, you know, we're going to say screw the crawl tanks. And we're going to ignore them because they won't shoot me. <laughs> so that's one. I'm going to drop out of this platform and actually deal with the crawl tanks now. As you guys know, if they're in hyper mode, they each take two shots. Pretty simple to deal with. This area is very quick to go through as well. So, very fun. Also, I kind of like this area. Like, I wish the mining facility in this game was a bit longer. And I, and I mentioned this the first time. And the reason I wish it was a bit longer is because it's a really cool area. It's just over so fast because you have so many upgrades at this point. You can just kind of do everything. So, we're going to drop here. This is a bit of space pirate lore. Which is called Vanguard. The time has come. Our leader commands. We go to war at last. Three worlds will be attacked. Each important to the Federation. We shall destroy the spy base at Alicia. The fuel gel production of Brio. And the naval station at Norian. Each of those wretched worlds will become as phase. Each a foothold into the territory of the hated Federation. From those worlds our Vanguard will go forth. At long last our enemies will be humbled. Then enslaved. Three Phazon Seeds will be sent, and Armada will accompany each of them. Dark Samus herself will lead the attack on Norian. Victory is ours for the taking. So as you guys know uh, from previous lore entries, the Space Pirates have essentially teamed up with Dark Samus, and Dark Samus is the one putting this planet into action. Now, this room has a giant, essentially, missile launcher constantly targeting you. Uh, you can overload it by shooting it, but it will target you if you don't. Uh, so the best thing to do here just to get through this room fast so you don't have to worry about being targeted by it Which I will show you when we get to the top of the room, of course. That's it right there uh, When we get to the top of the room Just keep moving and you will never ever be tracked fast enough for this thing to actually blow up all the bridges You can try but it doesn't work now This thing will target you if you start shooting it to try and overload it so you can completely ignore that from there uh, Now these are Jolly Roger drones as you guys know we've seen these throughout the game They are a little bit of space pirate fodder Essentially, they all died two shots. Now, going through this room is also really easy. Got a couple drones that'll come up from your right side. Again, two shots each will take them out. Now, they do hurt. They do do three damage a shot, and they can be kind of annoying uh, if you're constantly pushed back by them because they do have this little wonderful knockback factor of Metroid Prime 3, which is uh, it's not fun. Not fun to deal with. There's a piece of lore here, and we'll read this in a second. But I want some energy coming up, and you'll see why. Victory and loss. Today is a day of celebration and woe. Our forces have taken planet Brio, leaving the Federation outpost there in Cinders. Though we missed their spy base at Alicia, the planet itself was struck with a Phazon seed, but Norian. Norian was a failure. All thanks to the accursed hunter, Samus Aran. All is not lost, however. Our great leader defeated Aran and her mongrel allies in battle. If they aren't dead, they'll soon wish they were. Each of them bears her mark of corruption. Soon, they, like we disciples, will bow to her will. So yes, Phazon. It's a wonderful thing. It corrupts lots of things. It's fun. All right, so we're going to be going through this room really quickly. And I do want to point out, this is going to be our beam right here, the Nova Beam. Uh, but as you can see, we have no direct area or way to access it right now. So what I recommend everybody to do right now, if you're not full on energy, just shoot all the crates in this room. There's a ton of them. Just shoot them because you want the health here especially because these two crates will usually drop an ultra in a blue uh in fact I, I believe they always drop an ultra in a blue energy unit uh so make sure you shoot those crates you will need the health coming up this door we can't access quite yet but we will be able to in a moment and same with this we actually need the nova beam to access this so we're going to actually activate this elevator and we're going to go to the place where we can actually get the nova beam How's that sound? I want the Nova Beam. It's a good beam. It's actually really overpowered, and you'll see why when we go to Norian as well. So, 
you may notice that that is creating a little bit of a suction. That's actually going to be important to note as we fight all throughout this room here uh, with the space pipes. What I recommend you do is always, and as much as you can, attempt to stay in hyper mode for this fight. I don't care if you have to leave one of the space parts alive. Just make sure none of them have armor. Uh, the reason I suggest that none of them have armor, also try and leave them on one shot if you can. Um, the reason none of them have armor is because of what's about to happen here. I'm going to make sure I don't go corrupted here. Uh, so I'm going to shoot this guy. So you may notice that they're being pulled in. Provided you shoot the space pirate with low health in time, four nodes are going to appear on the screen. You shoot this node and you're good. Then it continues. You always want to deal with the armored troopers last. The stealth troopers are always the pain. Always fight the stealth troopers first and try and leave one pirate alive that has no armor. That is the key to winning this fight because only a certain amount of pirates can spawn at once. So as you can see, this pirate right now has no armor. So I'm going to wait for the suction to take hold of him. And you'll know when the suction takes hold because this middle pillar will turn from green to blue. So right here, we're going to switch into hyper mode. The suction is going to start pulling him in. We're going to shoot him tw a couple times, make sure he goes to the no health zone. And we're going to shoot this twice as well. Switch back out, try and pick up as much health as we can and deal with three of these space pirates right now. We're going to kill three of them here. Uh, I'm going to try and also stay on health uh, as well. I'm going to let the corruption take hold. Uh, that way I can get a little more health as I fight these stealth troopers. Um, we're not going to let the corruption fully take hold here, but we're going to let the corruption do its thing so we can actually uh, have to de uh, deal some damage uh, toward these guys. Health management here is one of the most important things in this entire game. Uh, especially in this section here because you will take a lot of damage super quickly. Uh, I can unfortunately not be uh, uncorrupted here, so we do have to deal with all these space parts the normal way. Uh, luckily, there's only two, uh, so I'm actually just going to kill one of them. Stay in, uh, stay in hyper mode here and deal with the other stealth trooper uh, once he, I get some corruption here because I, I prefer to be corrupted when I fight these guys uh, for obvious reasons. You just can make sure... You don't kill them. Because the Phazon obviously auto-vents after a while as well. Uh, and once you do this four times, we should have the last node right here. Yep. And once you do that four times, that is it. And it's going to kill any other space pirate that spawned as well. And you are good to go. You are automatically exited out of hyper mode at this point because you cannot be corrupted. And you're going to get about as much health as you were to defeat a boss. So, fun little mini fight there. Really good mechanics. If you don't, the, the thing I, I will warn you, if you don't kill the space pirate it, and it starts to pull you in, you take a full energy tank of damage just from getting hit uh, from the middle suction thing. So, don't get hit by the middle suction thing. But if you're still not hit by the middle suction thing, what you can end up doing is um, you just won't get a chance at the space pirates again. You'll have to wait for the thing to completely reset. Which kind of sucks. So dealing with that fight fast uh, is really important. So the Nova Beam is a really cool beam. Uh, the Phasite door terminal is offline. Power nodes behind the door must be activated. Well, as you guys know, we have X-Ray Visor. And this is, turns into one of the coolest mechanics in the game with the Nova Beam. The Nova Beam will consistently throughout the game be used with the X-Ray Visor from this point on. You will use it to activate switches. You will use it to do pretty much everything important. Uh, especially fighting certain enemies, and you'll see that as well. So what we actually have to do now is we have to go pick up a couple energy cells. We will come back to this door in a second, uh, and these will always drop energy after the fight as well, uh, sometimes. <laughs> so I just got bad RNG on that. That's okay. It also depends on how much health you have is how much energy those crates give you. Uh, so we're going to actually head this way. And the reason I'm going to head this way, I think this is actually... Uh, where we have to go. Okay, yeah, yeah. This is where we actually have to go for a second. So we're actually going to go through this phase out door. I don't know why I want to reverse the order on this, but we're going to. So we're, once again, we're going to activate no, uh, Nova Visor, or Nova Beam. Sorry, Nova... No, I call it the Nova Visor at this point because you combine X-Ray Visor and Nova Beam, so Nova Visor makes a lot of sense. Also, that sounds really cool, so I think I might just keep calling it that. Uh, what we're going to do here is you're going to notice we're going to connect back to the main room here uh, in a second. But we're not going to fully connect back to the main room. And the reason we're not going to fully connect back to the main room is for um, an energy cell, and then we're going to walk back. So this thing in the center here, you have to shoot 
It's going to raise a drill up. It's just jamming the floor. Uh, and of course, if you want some health and you still feel like you're pretty low on health, feel free to shoot these little bugs. Uh, there's a lot of them, and they do have a decent chance to drop a 50 energy unit, although it's... Uh, unfortunately, I'm full enough on health where they didn't drop anything. Um, which can happen, but that's okay. So what we're going to do, we're going to walk around this corner and pick up our energy cell here. We need to get this energy cell, and we need to pick up that last one on Norian as well before we forget. Once the door decides to open, you know we're good to go. So you can't actually do anything with this. All we're, all we're coming in this room for is just this energy cell, which I'm going to steal. Space pirates don't deserve it. Can I pull it out? Thank you. Can I pull the energy cell out of the slot? No, I cannot. Now, this is going to open the gate that will allow us to get back to the Space Pirate Command Center if we were to so choose. But like I said, we actually have to go to Norian because we have all the upgrades we need to actually pick up everything in Norian. So what you're going to do, you're going to find this grab ledge really quick, which happens to be on this ceiling. Sometimes looking up and then turning for me just doesn't work, uh, as you guys may have noticed there. And we're going to walk back to this other Nova Beam door. I'm going to shoot this crate a couple times because sometimes... No, okay, unlucky RNG again, not getting that energy unit. The first time you come through, you will always get that uh, ultra energy unit and a blue energy unit as well. Um, so, coming through here, we're going to activate this little gate, which is going to be one. So, this pattern can randomize uh, on this gate. The first time, it was, it was top left, it was bottom right, and then it was bottom left, bottom right. Now, you may also notice that there's a Metroid. So... Fun fact, if you pull out the Nova Beam plus X-Ray Visor, you can lock onto the Metroids and literally... Oh, get off me. Hate that. I absolutely hate that when they do that. So, again, Nova Vi Visor, X-Ray, shoot them in the brain. It insta-kills Metroids. You can also do that with a certain Space Pirate enemies as well uh, in the game now. That's going to be used a lot throughout this playthrough now. So what we're going to do, we're just going to quickly pick up this missile expansion. And we're going to read this lore, which I didn't scan apparently the first time I ever played this game. Brio Falls. Command has received disturbing reports from Brio. Contact with our outpost there has been terminated. A, co a coded blip trans showing Commander Rundus falling in battle to Samus has arrived. Worst of all, the Brio, the Brio, the Brionian seed, Bri Brionian? Yeah. Brionian seed has been demolished. The hunter's might is great. And she is efficient as ever when it comes to disrupting our operations. Our spies within the Federation tell us she travels to Elysia soon. We plan on having an appropriate welcoming party in place for her when she arrives. Commander Gore is a very accommodating host. So that kind of explains that the Space Pirates had this planned in advance. Like, a lot of the Space Pirate lore, it really does explain that Space Pirates had, like, everything for this planned in advance uh, to the events of Metroid Prime 3. They were waiting for an opportunity to strike, and, ab and they absolutely got it. So what I'm doing right now is I'm melting all the platforms on this landing site because I actually can't call my ship in without it. Uh, luckily, you don't need full charges. You can just melt it. But you do need to break every single one of these. If you don't, you actually can't call your ship in, which kind of sucks. But we can skip. Uh, we actually can't skip this. Now we can. There we go. So I'm going to call in my ship. And we're going to head straight to Norian here. I know I am also probably taking this episode really fast. Uh, for you guys, and I understand uh, that you guys might not be able to keep up as fast, but that's because I've already had to record this once. Never forget. Remember, make sure your mic is on when you try to record. Because half the time, my microphone isn't on anymore, and it kind of sucks. So, without further ado, let's head to Norian. Again, for the last time. Right. Norian. So what? The first thing you want to do when you land in Norian, always land at Cargo Dock A. This will make your trip through Norian super fast and super simple. And of course, as you guys know, I actually can't, um, I can't skip this because this is a loading transition. So once the loading transition is done, I will be right back with you guys. Alright, 
we're landing back on Nori, and I can skip that because it's just the ship landing. So the first thing we're going to want to do, you may notice that there's an item we've already missed here in Norian. What you're going to do, you're going to make an immediate left, and because we have spider ball now, you actually can see this hidden spider ball track on the side of the wall. You're going to follow this track all the way to the uh, back, and you're going to pick up a free missile expansion that's just sitting there. And that's all we needed to come to Cargo Dock A for, but we still have a little bit to do in Norian. So what we're going to do is we're just going to make an immediate left once again. Uh, that left should take us back to the main entrance of the Space Pirate Federation place. I went the wrong way, I'm pretty sure. No, I didn't. All right, I'm good. I'm good. I thought I went the wrong way for a second. I always, you always want to make that left. It's always left. Never forget. Most of the time in Metroid, you're always going to make a left, not a right. I mean, I'm making a right right now, but I suppose that doesn't matter. Because where we have to go is actually technically to an area that we could have accessed earlier, but we wouldn't have been able to finish. Uh, actually, no, that's not entirely false. Uh, we actually, that's not entirely true, I should say, because technically you could come back to Norian earlier and finish everything up. But it's best to come back when you have Spider Ball and the Nova Beam because it makes going through Norian for the final time really easy. And you'll see what I mean as we get uh, further and further into it. Now you may notice we're also missing two energy tanks still. Um, those will be picked up very soon. Uh, we will be finishing that up. So as you guys remember from the beginning of the game, during the attack on Norian, there was this panel here that we couldn't quite activate. Well now, as you guys remember, Plasma Beam allowed us to access these panels. So technically, with Plasma Beam, you could have come back here to do this. Uh, but, the reason I didn't is for what's at the end of this corridor. And I'll explain that when we get to it. So, heading into the end of this corridor, the first thing you're going to see is another one of these. But these don't have a guardrail. Now, no guardrail here means that there's an item at the other side of it. Of course. Why wouldn't there be? It's a Metroid game. So, you're going to make your way slowly across these platforms and you're going to wait for this one if you don't wait for that one you get pushed off into the electricity and the electricity does it's like one damage every two seconds it's it's really not strong like you'll see me fall into it here and just take one not even not even a hit not even any damage so you know that makes uh my life a little bit easier there but of course coming to this area you'll see that we have to deal with some liquid phase on uh, now, Liquid Phazon, they will summon Phazon mi uh, Mites, which essentially explode into Phazon. They're really easy to deal with, though. So you have uh, nothing to worry about when you fight uh, Liquid Phazon, except when they come at you from the, from the floor, uh, because it can do damage. And these things, unfortunately, are sometimes really hard to hit, really hard to hit just because of how they're positioned. Um, especially because it will constantly throw Phazon Mites at you, and they will constantly try and jump towards you. Luckily, the Nova Beam kind of just destroys them, and I need to get rid of this thing because it's just going to summon more Phazon Mites, and if I don't, I don't want to have to deal with them anymore. So, that's fine. Now, this room right here is just open for map completion, if you guys are looking for map completion. This room just explains uh, information on the planets uh, and the Olympus-class battleship uh, for the game. So, this uh, explains the feder all of the Federation planets and why the fa uh, Space Pirate Federation... Why the Galactic Federation, not Space Pirate Federation, why the Galactic Federation had bases set up there. Um, so, super simple. Um, don't I don't really want to go into the lore on that. Uh, it just explains why they're there now. Coming into this room, the door is going to lock on you. And you may notice at the other end of the room, there is some sort of phase on growth. Now, this is going to spawn quite a lot of enemies. Uh, I believe there are 12 phase on hoppers. Not alpha phase on hoppers, just phase on hoppers. That we have to deal with. The Alpha Hoppers have like purple spikes on their back. Uh, and we'll be fighting more of those later. These things are really easy to kill. All you need to do is go into Hyper Mode and blast them with one uh, one Hyper Missile. Uh, remember you do get four Hyper Missiles on a tank uh, of energy. So uh, eliminating the Phase on Hoppers efficiently is more than likely recommended. If you're a really good shot, you'll never miss a Phase on Missile. Um, and you never have to worry about it. Now there are some Phase on Hoppers that come from behind you. And luckily, they're very easy to deal with. Two, three. Phase on missiles make life easy. I just want—I just want, I just want to point that out now. The hyper missile and fa or phase on missile makes life very easy, and you can clear that room very quickly. Which is all another reason why I wanted to come back later because 
uh, the hyper missile just obliterates enemies like that. And we're going to be using a lot more hyper missiles coming up. Now we do have some liquid phase on to deal with here and you could shoot them a few times. Luckily I got a really good charge shot on that one. I usually don't hit these things with charge shots. Uh, but if you do, it absolutely just obliterates them. Uh, so what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to let that thing run away. I'm going to call in my ship. Because right here is actually where we're going to end the episode, right at this ship. I can skip this as well. We don't need to see the ship landing constantly, as you guys do. Also, little Phazon uh, material, It's just he just runs away half the time, so you can ignore him. Uh, but what you can't ignore is what I missed up here. If you guys are really into the lore of this game, here's a piece of lore that not a lot of people know is here. I didn't either, apparently, as you can see, because it was red. Uh, so the first time I played through on hyper mode, I missed it. Planet Norian. Though located on the fringe of the Federation, the planet Norian is of great importance. The military maintains a strong presence in the sector, and the base on Norian is often the first line of defense against enemies that operate outside of Galactic Federation space. Originally a barren orb incapable of sustaining life, a sophisticated terraforming project designed by the Aurora Unit 486 has turned Norian into a hardy forest world. So a little fun fact on the planet Norian. Now what I'm going to do here, oh I didn't want to waste the missile, that kind of stinks, that's fine, whatever. One, two, three, four. Good, I hit all of the targets, excellent. So you can't go to the right here, if I try to turn to the right and scan this gate, you'll notice that gate, security gate is locked, cannot be damaged by weapons. So you actually can't do anything about that. Luckily. The game is nice enough to give us this convenient tunnel. Now, this is why I recommended coming back to Norian so late. This room right here, we're about to meet an old friend. No, it's not a Berserker Lord. But we're about to meet a boss that we fought actually not too long ago. However, and this is a big however, you can literally one-shot this boss. And you may wonder, what boss are you talking about? What boss can you one-shot now? Well, it's a Metroid Hatcher. And a uh, very easy way to beat it. Lock on, shoot him once. With the Nova Beam, X-Ray Visor combo, and he's gone. And he also drops, like, as much health as a boss. So, once again, if you guys really want that energy and really just want to get this, this, get this fight over with, definitely come back with the Nova Beam and the X-Ray Visor. Definitely one of the best combos in the game. It's, all, it's almost like a beam combo in a way, really, if you think about it. It's super powerful, and you can see how much energy it just dropped as well. Uh, so now, with the Metroid Hatcher down, as you saw, that revealed an energy cell, which we will get to. Uh, and this is actually the last uh, energy cell that you can pick up or find in the game. That's not the one at the GFS Valhalla. That's right at the beginning of the GFS Valhalla, and they essentially give that one to you for free. Now, if you want to 100% this game... You need all nine energy cells, and luckily I'm carrying eight of those right now. So you know I am, I'm going to be able to 100% this game because I have all nine. In order to beat this game normally, you need about six energy cells. It's five or, it's like five or six energy cells. It's not too many uh, energy cells, and it makes it really easy. Um, and luckily the energy cells are... They're not like the nine Sky Temple Keys in Metroid Prime 2 where, you know, you have to constantly walk around and you can't find a lot of them, like, until the very end of the game. Uh, and it's not like Metroid Prime 1 where you have to make, like, massive backtracking, um, like, massive backtracks to find all the Chozo artifacts with almost every upgrade in the game. Metroid Prime 3, I think, does finding the essential key item a bit better uh, to 100% the game. And the reason I say this is because... Uh, you can find energy cells just throughout normal play, and on top of that, usually you can go back into an area with just a couple upgrades to get an energy cell that you couldn't later. It makes the late game grind really easy, so you can focus more on the items rather than the key collectible, um, which is super nice. So with that, we are actually just going to fly back to the pirate homeworld here, uh, and then we're actually going to call it an episode. Uh, so we are essentially done. Norian is cleared. We have 100% of Norian. We have a, almost 100%. Actually, no, yes, we did 100% Alicia. Uh, and, um, yeah, we're almost done. We're actually almost done with this game. I can probably within, oh man, thinking about it, seven episodes almost, uh, we might be done uh, within seven episodes of the series. And it, it was a blast. It was an absolute blast to record this series. 
Uh, again, we've beaten Metroid Prime 1 on its hardest difficulty, Metroid Prime 2 on its hardest difficulty, and now, of course, the Metroid Prime 3 we will be beating on its hardest difficulty as well. Um, and obviously, this isn't the... I did not play the Metroid Prime 1 and 2 trilogy remake. I actually played the original GameCube versions, so it actually only has veteran difficulty and not... Uh, normal. It only has technically two difficulties. Hyper mode was added later into the trilogy version, and I unfortunately did not pick up the trilogy version. But I honestly just, I honestly like playing the GameCube version, I think, a bit more than the trilogy version. But that's also because they patched a lot of tricks uh, in the trilogy version. Uh, so, like, you can't get space jump early in Metroid Prime 1. Actually, no, you can still get space jump early in Metroid Prime 1. Um, but they patched a lot of, like, the game breaking uh, glitches where you can just, you know, go through the map! And go and, you know, have a bunch of fun stuff with that. But anyways, guys, that is going to be it for this episode of Metroid Prime 3 Corruption. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. And of course, in the next episode, we're heading directly into the heart of the Space Pirate Command Center to, well, finish off what we need to finish off. And you guys know what that's going to be. We're going to have a lot of fun uh, in these next few episodes coming up. And I'm absolutely looking forward to... Uh, having a little bit of fun in these next episodes. So once again, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode of Metroid Prime 3 Corruption. And until then, this is CIJ Man 777 signing off. Stay safe, everybody.